in a few moments, we'll be going live to tonight's national nightly news. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on tonight on Channel One. At seven o'clock, it's the semi-final of the quotation game, and it's a nail-biting quiz tonight as a team of nuclear physicists take on four old ladies from East Grinching. That's followed at 8pm by award-winning documentary series The Shape of Now, which tonight looks at the history of the knee-length sock and its importance during the great blackouts of 1871. Not one to miss. At 9pm, sit back and relax with multiple award-winning movie The Freedom of Being Colin, taking us all the way up to 11.15, where, as usual, Dr Adrian Atkinson Blimey will be grilling his guests in Incisors, and tonight sees a return for leading economist Katie Brightman. Finally, at midnight, it's the National Weather Report, before we say good night until tomorrow. But now, it's time to join Jeremy Donaldson for the National Nightly News. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main stories tonight, moving on up, the election win that experts said just couldn't happen. Hopeful or hostile? Controversy as global mega corporation Remington Fist buys Honest Andy's totally independent and corners the flawed market. Top chap. Sports fans everywhere celebrate as popular footballer Johnny Hamsleeves wins Sports Personality of the Year. And a spoonful of sugar. Megan will be chatting with movie star Lawrence Blunderclatch about his new movie, The Medicated. And, of course, We'll be going live to advance headquarters to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic victory. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. But first, the votes are in and it's a decisive win for advance. The landslide victory, with an astonishing 81% of the popular vote, is the biggest election win in living memory. Advance appealed to voters up and down the country with their bold promises of permanent change, but critics have accused him of a severe lack of actual policies and of being deliberately vague. The opposition parties have all conceded defeat to Advance's overwhelming mandate, but have yet to appear publicly. However, former Home Secretary Jeffrey Jeffries has issued a statement in which he comments that we have all been seduced by the shiny wrapping paper but have yet to see the contents of the box. Sounds like sour grapes to me, Jeff. After the break, Megan Wolfe will be speaking to a man whose grapes certainly aren't sour, the international heartthrob and inexplicable box office sensation that is Lawrence Blunderclatch. And later in the programme, we'll be going live to Advance HQ to hear the co-leader's acceptance speech. That's all coming up now for the break. Where can you get warm, sandy beaches, clear waters and fine dining? Well, we're not sure, but here in St Bumley on the Taint, we've got a big hill and the bus comes twice daily. Visit picturesque St Bumley this summer and experience a holiday that's simply unlike any other. Come and visit the abandoned spade factory. Your kids will love exploring the old production line in relative safety. Grab your tetanus shots and come down today. There's no gift shop, but feel free to grab an old handle from the skip out the back. Or why not indulge your cultured side and visit some of our sites of historic interest? Like the Paris Church, currently the subject of a thrilling police investigation. The Old Market, home of the fairly big cabbage. Or the hole. Hey, that's a nice hole. And after a long day exploring Bumley, you can relax in comfort in one of two communal tents. Or you could take advantage of our famous nightlife. There's a radio in the calf, or on Fridays we gather to watch tramps fight. Come on, Harold, you scruffy old meth head. Only 85 minutes from the coast, and with more than two areas of outstanding natural interest. Isn't it time your family went Bumley way? And hey, if you come in the dry season, you've got a car park. St Bumley, on the tank.
Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners advance. But first, our very own culture reporter, Megan Wolfe, is here with a star of both stage and screen. Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolfe, culture correspondent. And today, I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare to the Shopbot films. I'm very excited to be joined today by none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you that being with you here today is among the greatest joys of my life. <laughs> May I say having you here with us is among ours. <laughs> Bless you. So you've just finished filming your latest movie, which is called The Medicated. The Medicated, yes. <laughs> wow, what was that like? Well, as I said to Peter at The Wrap, that's Peter Jensen, the director. Do you know him? He's a wonderful chap. He really is. I've worked with him on several movies, all terribly successful. I said to Peter, what a wild ride this has been. And you know what, Megan? I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And am I right in saying that the character you play in this movie is quite an academic one? Absolutely right. A scientist. Was that a challenge at all? What exactly are you implying? But seriously, yes, you're right. It was a complete departure from my last starring role when I played Sergeant Brock Rockman in Bullet Man. You'll remember that that was the true story of one soldier's fight for a love that surpasses all others. A love, of course, for freedom. Mm. I think it's grossed over a billion dollars, but uh, honestly, who's counting? It's a role that saw you scoop two Best Actor awards, if I remember correctly. It's so sweet of you to mention it, but I really am not in it for the awards. Although, those three little statues do take pride of place on my mantelpiece. Uh, with all the others, I'm sure. So. If you're not doing it for the awards, mm. what is it then that drives you? Oh, that is a beautiful question, Megan, and not easy to answer. Like cut me and I will bleed. And often that's how it feels, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Bleeding, giving, suffering for one's audience. I suppose in the end, I do it for the difference it makes. I do it for the people that I inspire, the little people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive change that I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, <laughs> we're in for some real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic election result? Oh, well, <laughs> well, now you're asking. Historic election result, indeed. Historic is the word. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. But um, I think I've always been quite clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to not f*** things up. Uh, yes, well... Um, Sorry, I said f***. No. That, I'm really... I'm <laughs> well, Sorry. Well, Lawrence, I believe you brought in a clip from The Medicated, which opens next week around the country. Lawrence, do tell us what's going on here. I'd be delighted. <laughs> this is a really pivotal scene where my character, Dr. Lance Hemlock, is faced with a decision that could affect humanity's very survival. Wow, exciting stuff. Let's take a look. I don't understand it. Doctor. I don't understand it. It's not your fault. You think I don't know that? No one has been mustn't. Think of Carol. That's Dr. Lance to you, Miss Flanagan. <laughs> Did it for you, baby. All for you. Dr. Hemlock. We we're gonna change the world, do you remember? If only I listened to you. Dr. Hemlock. You told me, but I didn't listen. Doctor. I'm drowning, Lance, you said. You need to see this. No, it's all too late. Look at this! Got it. The virus. The sterility. This moment, 
this phone there, this, this is the key. We could stop it all. Yes, yes, we could stop it all. We have to ask ourselves if, if we, we should. should. Crazy Neil's crazy pre-Christmas sofa and chair deals. It's a steal with Crazy Neil. We don't care if you've been naughty or nice. We got green sofas, red sofas, brown cushions, pink cushions. You've got a grey sofa. We've got a great sofa. In a grey, a brown, a pink, a yellow, a purple. Neil's deals are unreal. You've got people coming over at Christmas. You've got Nan. She's going to leave a stain on the sofa. You don't want to sit on this white sofa. She's going to have to sit on the dark sofa. This is a deal with Neil Appeal. You want to throw? Throw your money at us. We'll give you a leather sofa for a price that is just crazy. If you've got lightning striking, then strike whilst the lightning is hot. You've got a disused sofa. We don't care if it's smelly, dug in front of your telly, full of welly. We'll take that shit away. Don't make a meal out of it. Make a deal out of it. We got a big ass deal on a big ass chair. We've got white chairs, blue chairs, dudes, inflatable chairs. This is a crazy deal with meal appeal. You don't want no lame ass chair. You want a great chair. We had a man come down the other day and he brought in his young daughter and he wanted her to have the best chair. We got those chairs, we got non those chairs, we got tall chairs, chairs on wheels, wheelchairs, we got chairs for twins, chairs made out of steel, chairs that are a steel and a deal. We got those chairs. You want crazy? We got crazy. Crazy Neil's got crazy deals. You want a toilet? We can do you a toilet. We can do you a toilet next to a chair. We can do you a chair next to a toilet. Hell, we can even do you a toilet chair. Do you come on down? You bring your ass. We've got it. You want it. You want it. We've got it. You want it. You pay us. You want it. We've got it. You want it. You want it. We've got it. You pay us. Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go live to advanced headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are about to make their acceptance address. Shall I start? Go for it, Pat! <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you all for coming, and, well, where do I start? What a day! They said we couldn't do they it! They certainly did. They used every dirty, low-down, lying, southern b trick they had against us, but you, the people, you saw right through their s***. I'm sorry about the language there. Sorry about that, I've had a couple of celebratory pints. It makes me coarser than the grownest Memorably put. <laughs> but to be honest, who can blame Peter for celebrating? Throughout the campaign, you've heard us say that Advance are not a political party. A party is what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. You need a team. A team that can change things. But today is day one of a new future, a better, fairer future. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's over. They shouldn't be celebrating. They should be putting their <laughs> pants on and opening their dusty checkbooks. Again, colourfully put, but not inaccurate. <laughs> Before we came out here to address the nation, we used our executive powers to pass the Assets and Wealth Act Working with the tax office, we have produced a definitive list of every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know the sort. Of, probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow, we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds or creative accounting. A simpler, fairer, unavoidable set of tax laws. So all you public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passports. You want them back? You want to leave like you threatened before the election? That's fine. But first, you're going to pay up. You're going to pay back. Advance are going to turn this country from a nation of warring individuals into a team, to properly fund health and education, to raise the living standards of us all. The pundits said we'd have to raise billions, but you'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours, that's absolute 
ferret So to you, posh The people who pay you a pittance to serve them drinks in their private clubs. The people whose children you raise. So they've got time to get even richer. Advance have this to say to you. It ends today. We are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards. It ends today. We will put the wealth of this country back where it should have always been. In the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow we'll start making it fair again. Just like we promised we would. And until then, ladies and gents, I suggest we all get I can't argue with that. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> well, an interesting acceptance speech there from the leaders of Advance. And our apologies for the fruity language.